What's up guys, the April Patreon rewards are now available. Armageddon, Teferi Time Reveler, and Nekusar the Mind Razor are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. I hope you're having a fantastic Monday. Uh, I'm excited because we are going to be testing out some new cards this week, I think. Uh, we're going to be focusing today on Eerie Ultimatum. Uh, I kind of wanted to look at the full Ultimatum cycle. I know a few people have been playing with some different deck lists featuring some of them, uh, but Eerie Ultimatum isn't actually one that I've seen at all. Uh, in terms of just playing arena. Now, I have seen a few deck lists online, uh, some of which inspired this list, uh, but I, I wanted to give it a shot for myself. So this is the deck that I have come up with. Uh, and again, that is inspired somewhat by the deck list that I have seen, as well as just some thoughts that I've had on the, on the deck as a whole. Uh, and the whole thing is looking to kind of fill the yard and then be able to play an eerie ultimatum for just lots and lots of value. Uh, Eerie Ultimatum, if you don't know, 7 mana sorcery, return any number of permanent cards with different names from the graveyard to the battlefield. That is a powerful, powerful effect. I'm talking we can get so much value in one turn if we can pull this off. Uh, now, I will say as well, uh, we're going to go through the rest of the deck, but uh, I did test this just once, and it did go off, and it did its thing. Uh, we, we did get the win and it was really, really sweet. So I'm excited. Hopefully we can pull that off at least once or twice during this video. Uh, the whole point of the deck though, as I said, is to fill the yard for this. So, uh, we do have Meyer Triton, uh, as a four of here, uh, a great way to fill the yard. Not only that, it's a death toucher. So it just gives us a way to block no matter what the opponent has coming at us. Uh, assuming it doesn't have first strike, which does kind of rule out the fervent champions, but almost anything else, this is perfect at blocking. Uh, Paradise Druid as well as Skull Prophet are both in here for ramp. Now Skull Prophet uh, has a little bit of extra upside because it puts the top two cards of your library into your graveyard if you do not use it for mana ramp. Uh, it also is just a nice blocker as well as Paradise Druid, but this one obviously has Hexproof instead. Uh, we've kind of got a 3-2 split here because I do think the Hexproof uh, is just a little bit more powerful uh, or more important I should say because it does just make sure it sticks around. Uh, Fiend Artisan, a really nice uh, kind of back-end engine for this deck. Uh, not only does it allow you to kind of sacrifice these things to get more things, but uh, it's just a really, you know, powerful card. Uh, now, what I will say, it's a little bit, you do kind of have to ramp into it a little bit because we obviously don't have like a three drop here or anything like that, but we've got quite a lot of four drop, uh, you know, creatures. And by a lot, I mean two, but very powerful ones. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. We do have a one of Banishing Light here. Uh, you'll see a few cards that we've kind of got like ones of or like kind of odd numbers of. Uh, it's because of Eerie Ultimatum. It's okay if we've only got one or two of them because, again, hopefully the idea is we're going to get them all out at once. So uh, Banishing Light, obviously just kind of a catch-all. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to deal with something on the board. Any kind of permanent we can deal with. Uh, Ashiok Dream Render, uh, I've got three of, I know some people were running like one, some people were running four. I thought three was kind of the sweet spot. Uh, it's not a card you really want to draw multiples of, but, uh, it does really, really help fuel this deck by putting four cards into your, uh, graveyard and also exiling the opponent's graveyard, which in a lot of instances right now can be very, very good. Lurus Sacrifice, for instance. Uh, any kind of deck running a Titan is going to hate this card. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that this does. It also just shuts down certain uh, like Fabled Passages on the opponent's side and stuff like that, and opposing Fiend Artisans, so very, very good. Uh, Questing Beast here is a two of. A great way to threaten Planeswalkers, regardless of the Eerie Ultimatum. This is just a really, really strong card. Uh, comes in, can swing in immediately, can block. It has Vigilance, it has Haste, does everything you needed to do. Uh, including kill those planeswalkers, which is obviously very, very important. Uh, we have a one of Pelucranos Unchained, kind of a nice way to clear the board. Uh, it, it just gives you a really, really strong card uh, that can fight anything, uh, which is awesome. So absolutely love this. Uh, two of Shatter the Sky. We're not running the full four because we obviously have a lot of creatures ourselves, but we don't care as much if they die. Uh, again, we have the Eerie Ultimatum. It's nice to Shatter and then Eerie Ultimatum, uh, just so you get all of your stuff back and they don't. Uh, Vraska, Golgari Queen. 
kind of just an all-star in this deck. Uh, not only does it deal with small-time creatures on the opponent's side, but it also gives you some card draw by sacrificing permanence and life gain. Uh, and that's kind of what we want to do. We want to be putting stuff in the graveyard. And so this just really, again, is kind of an engine for the deck. Uh, we do have Nethroi, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, Apex of Death here as a one of, uh, not only does it have Death Touch and Lifelink, um, if we mutate it and return any number of target creature cards with converted, or excuse me, with total power 10 or less from the graveyard to the battlefield, uh, this is kind of like a mini Eerie Ultimatum, uh, but not only that, it also is, you know, gotten out by Eerie Ultimatum, so... Uh, this is actually a really sweet card. Obviously, we don't have much mutate in this, so this is only a one-shot deal. Uh, but it's just a very strong card in general and just a really, really good beater. With Death Touch and Lifelink, it's difficult to deal with. Uh, Elspeth Conquers Death, kind of an all-star here. We've got two of them. Uh, it does exile something on the opponent's side and then also bring something back in our deck. Again, we're filling the yard, so we're going to have plenty of options there. Two of Nissa Shakes the World. Uh, this card just, again, helps us ramp, really helps us get to where we need to be. Uh, and it's just a really strong card on its own. I mean, left unanswered, Nissa can very, very easily take over a game. Uh, we have a one of Vivian Monster's Advocate. Uh, another kind of backbone of the deck where it just kind of gives you extra plays uh, off the top of your deck. Uh, not only that, but it's allowing you to, if you minus two, uh, get another creature ma uh, with lesser converted mana cost out of your deck uh, just for free. So it's actually a very, very good card. Uh, we've got a one of Liliana, Liliana, excuse me, Dreadhorde General as well. This card has been crazy, crazy good in mid-range decks. Uh, not only does it kind of help clear the board a little bit, but anytime something of yours dies, you draw a card, uh, Shatter the Sky. <laughs> Um, this just gives you so much value. It's ridiculous. And then, of course, the four of Eerie Ultimatum, so we can bring everything back. Uh, we do have 27 lands. We're going pretty high with the land counts on this one, uh, with good reason. We obviously need to get to seven. We do have some rampers, but, uh, and including Nissa, but it's nice to make sure we hit our land drops. Uh, as far as what we've got, one planes, three swamp, because we are, we've got a lot of black in this deck. And then two forests. Uh, we are four, four, and four on all of the shock lands. Uh, one temple of silence and one temple of malady. We don't want too many tap lands, honestly. Uh, and we also have the four triumph uh, lands and then three fabled passage. Not the full four. We don't really have that many basics, so it's okay that we uh, we only run three of these. Worth noting when we do eerie ultimatum, lands count. We they are permanent, so we do get we we can get these back depending on what's in there. So. Let's jump in. Uh, I know that was a very long-winded explanation for a very uh, kind of mid-range strange deck, one that I have not yet at least seen yet, uh, and I'm excited about this. Uh, so hopefully we can get some wins with this one. I'm excited. Uh, also, guys, uh, if you're not already, please make sure you subscribe and enter our giveaway. Uh, Garuda, huh? Yeah, let's do this. Um... I don't know if this is going to be good or not, but we're going to try it. Uh, so if you're not um, if you're not already entered in the giveaway, all you got to do, uh, just be subscribed to the channel uh, and then make sure you comment. It can be on any video, any video at all. Uh, and make sure you comment hashtag Acoria giveaway. You can put a comment with it or, you know, do whatever you want. Um, but if you do that, you are entered to win uh, the bundle, uh, which we're very excited about. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Kind of just flood a little bit here. <clears throat> so this, we're already up to five mana. We've got six incoming, uh, along with an Ashiok next turn, so we can start filling the yard, along with these, which can help fill the yard as well. So we will see what we get. Um... Yes, so the giveaway, uh, the winner will be chosen on uh, May 16th, Saturday, May 16th. That is the day after uh, the set drops. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this here. Solely because we do have the next land in hand, so uh, we'll just go ahead and take advantage of this. Get our black. Let's do this. Uh... We do always kind of want to target ourselves here. Ooh, Shatter would have been quite nice, but uh, they are about to go off for sure. 
Uh, let's do this. And let's do this. Nissa is very good. Um, okay. We'll attack in here. Uh, my assumption is, you know, they're just gonna hit take the take the four. Uh, so yeah, excited about that giveaway, guys. Uh, we really do appreciate any and all support. You guys have been fantastic so far. Um, we're doing really, really exciting stuff. So, Pelucranos is good. They can't activate it. Am I correct in saying that? We're going to get a Pelucranos of our own, I believe. Did I did I see Pelucranos go? Maybe not. I might be wrong. A uh, key thing here, we're going to activate this first. Um, and we cannot activate the Skull Prophets. So let's just keep that in mind. That's fine. Okay, we're not. Uh, let's get this out. Let's do this. Are we away? We're a white away from activating, aren't we? Whoops. Um, well, that kind of sucks, but we can do this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could do this for six. Uh, let's just see. Sacrifice one of these guys. Can get literally anything. Um, let's get that. It's just a tougher thing for them to fight. If they want to fight this, they can, but they kill it. Or they kill the Pelucranos. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Uh, fortunately, they didn't really go off with the Garuda so much. Um, does it just deal the damage? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So we really need a white source here. Uh, and here we're seeing the advantage of having a Paradise Druid above a Skull Prophet. Skull Prophet's great, but uh, it does not do the white mana like we need it to. Uh, I should have actually gotten the white mana, whoops, uh, initially. So that was a bit of a mistake. I'm hoping we still have one. Oh, we don't. Wow, that's really bad for us. Um, hmm. I kind of think we just attack in here. I think we've, uh, unfortunately, me not getting that white source was definitely, definitely the wrong play. Um, oh, they got our Pelucranos, duh. That makes sense. Um, let's make sure we get some non-important cards here. Shatter's not gonna matter. We'll take a Paradise Druid as well. Just in case we get our next white source, it'd be good to have that. So, it's in the turn. I mean, we got a powerful, powerful thing going here. I just don't know. You know, if they get another Garuda, for instance, we may just be in bad shape. Okay. Yeah. Very cool card. They do get to swing in for two here if they would like. I am not going to activate this quite yet. Let's do this. We'll do this. Um... <laughs> interesting, interesting. I'm going to let that happen. We lose our Fiend Artisan, that's okay. Uh... I think I'm just going to get rid of that as well. I'm
I'm kind of forcing them into... Oh, well, they got another Gerudo. Well, that's pretty good. Did they even hit anything? Oh, they got a Thassa. Oh, okay. Well, they're going to get a bounce out of this then. That's pretty good. They got a Thassa or, I believe, a Paradise Druid on our end. Or no, was that a Fiend Artism? Yeah. Wow, seriously. Um, okay. Well, we can actually pull this off now then. Um, so let's untap this. And let's do this. All right. So this is what we were wanting to do. Get you, get you. Get you, get you, get you. Get you, get you, you, you. And you. All right. Uh, I'm going to let that enter tapped. You enter tapped. Lots of stuff. <laughs> um, we'll keep this one. Uh, yeah, we'll take out Garuda, I think. That's fine. Just so they can't flicker it. Um, you can go to the bottom. Oh, man. That kind of sucks. Um, we'll put you out. We will put this guy out. We'll give him Vigilance, I think. Um, I'm actually going to do this. Because uh, we're pretty close to, you know, not really having much. So I am not trying to mill ourselves out here. Okay. Um, that. That. And that. We're just going to... Deny them everything that we possibly can. Uh, and let's do this. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we're seeing the power of Eerie Ultimatum here, guys. That's pretty awesome. Okay, they have a Garuda. Sure. Not bad, not bad. A Dream Trawler. That's very good. Though I don't know if it completely digs them out of this. We'll see. Ah, they still Questing Beast. Okay. They can attack kind of any of these. It doesn't really matter that much. Um. <laughs> I'm just going to let that do its thing. I know that's a two for one kind of thing, and that's fine. We have to be real careful of not milling ourselves out here. Might have been better even just to let that happen, but they got an end race four runners. That's very good. Not really at the end of the turn, but it's, I mean, it's a good card. All right. Don't really want that. Um, Cause again, we're, yeah, there we go. Woo. All right. We got there. Game one. Uh, that was a really fun game too. Uh, as you can see, these games can be a bit of a grind. Um, thankfully, Nissa really, really helped us get there, which uh, was awesome. Um, but in general, this can be a bit of a grindy deck. So uh, game one, we got there. We got the Eerie Ultimatum uh, out, which definitely won us the game, which that's the goal. That's the goal. It's a fun one. I really, really like it. Uh, we'll, we'll give it two more and see how we do, how we are doing. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, we've got a two, three, four. Um, I think we'll keep. Need to remember second white. We're learning this deck as we go a little bit. Need to always remember the second white there. That's very, very key. Uh, we will lead on the overgrown team though this time. Fabled passage, huh? Wish we had had Ashiok out. <laughs> Uh, 
green. Okay. Um, let's throw you out, and let's throw you out. So next turn, we're looking to Ashiok, uh, fill up our yard a little bit, and then hopefully pump this guy up for some good attacks. We'll we'll see what they've got, though. Uh, we could also Mire Triton. Let's try it. Let's, let's try it. I'm expecting like a quench. It's probably a Simic deck. Simic Flash. Uh, maybe a Brazen Borrower on the Fiend Artisan. Okay, it does land. Uh, got a Nissa. Unfortunately, it didn't pump this up at all, but that's okay. I'm guessing the opponent is kind of trying to figure out what exactly we're doing. Because um, they're not really seeing a whole lot at the moment. Okay. If they want to block that, by all means. Um, looks like they don't, but that's fine. I would have loved for them to block, by all means. That's the great thing about this deck, I think, is like all these little creatures, you know, are great for us because who cares if they die? Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, now here we kind of have an interesting option. Uh, we can shoot for the goal, the, the Vraska, which probably is what we're going to try and do. Um, I'm assuming that they've got a counter, like they kind of have to have a counter, but let's try it. We got to burn them out of counters somehow. Um, they could bounce this, and that would be bad, but we do get to kill this. So if they Brazen Borrower here, you know, we still have a play. Quench it. Okay, sure. That's fine. Let's just go ahead and attack here. Keep the pressure on them. They can try and, they can, you know, get in here, kill Ashiok. That's kind of fine. Um, I... I don't care that much if they do that, so. Okay, they're just coming at me. That's fine. I'll I'll probably just cash in the Ashiok here, depending on what they uh they've got. Looks like nothing. Um Happy to cash that in. We do need to find an eerie ultimatum, I will say that. Yes, please. Well, that gives us an out. My assumption is they're going to bounce this. Um, they've got to kind of do something about this. Otherwise, it's two-turn clock on its own. Yep, that makes sense. And that's fine. We do get to replay it. This deck does keep on the pressure pretty well. I will say that. It looks like they're a little short on lands here, which I do feel for them on. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so first things first. We're going to attack in. If they've got another borrower, they're going to need to do something about this. Um, they can flash this one in and just kind of block however they see fit, or they can trade these off. It doesn't really matter. Um, so that's fine. Um, and if they do play something here, we kind of get a free Pelucranos in. So, like, I'm going to take the free Pel Pelucranos. Um, I'll pay the two and see what we can do here. Um, all right. So, again, the things that we want to make sure we use for this are the things that we either have doubles of or that cannot be brought back with Eerie Ultimatum. So, uh... At this point, though, I think we're in. Yeah, uh, we'll just put one of these up. 
lands are also not the worst thing to exile, but they don't, you know, they're still a, a, a something you can get back with your ultimatum. Sure. That's fine. Again, we can just kind of replay it. <laughs> uh, Pelucranos being able to uh, kind of be our backup plan here is really, really nice because it just burns through their stuff. Yeah, we, we burn through our yard pretty quick here, um, but it's kind of fine. Okay, so I'm assuming they've got a bounce effect or something to... Uh... They have to have a bounce or a counter, I, th I guess, though, right? Oh, well, that's pretty good. Um, fortunately, we don't have it quite yet, but go ahead and do this. Um, I think we'll leave that. It's a haster, uh, which is pretty solid. Now, if we do one, two, three, no, we don't quite have enough, and that's okay. Uh, so in that case, I kind of don't want to play Pelucranus, um, which is a little bit strange, but let's all attack here. Potential we could have left the Mire Triton back, but I don't think there's any way that they're going to be able to deal that much damage this turn. So... I am going to let that happen. That's fine. We're going to get two damage in, I believe, unless they also bounce this. Oh, okay. Sure. That's fine. We'll play out the Fiend Artisan again, and we'll just pass here. We could cycle this away. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I believe we have all of our colors. Um, what we don't want to do is run straight into a counter because that's going to be a problem. So what we'll do is attack first. Uh, if they want to attack here, I kind of think we just take it because then they have to deal with this, but we'll, we'll see. Interesting matchup, this. I will say that. Um, I did not expect this to be as grindy, I will say, as it is. But it's a pretty good one. I like it. I love this deck, by the way. Um, okay, do we cycle this away and draw the Questing Beast? I'm going to say no. Okay. We could also just play the Questing Beast, but... I mean, we're not here to to do silly stuff, right? We're here to, to do the most. I really want them to bounce this or play something and kill this, and then it's fine because they don't have mana anymore. I mean, we're going to try it. I'm positive they have a counter. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That is fine. All right. <clears throat> Probably would have been smart just to go for the questing beast, but hey, if we lose because of that, it's just because we were trying to do cool stuff. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's try it. They got to counter it. Or they, I guess, can just flash in the borrower. Uh, but that's a very temporary fix, so. Oh. Okay. But see, we're in a position where they're trading away their Night Pack Ambusher, uh, which feels bad. Got a Fabled Passage. That's good. Um, so they got one unknown card. Hmm. Get the eerie ultimatum out. We'll get one of the fiend artisans. Uh, those and that. Pretty good. This deck just like keeps going. <clears throat> That's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. Yeah. 
you got it. It's not it. Um, cool. So let's just, just, just let's let's just do it. Let's just let's just do it. <laughs> this deck is fun. This is really fun. Yes, I know we can't fight stuff. No, I I don't particularly care. Uh, let's go under. You, 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 you. Oh, wait. There we go. I just kind of want to see what would happen. We're still learning this deck, so this is very much just for fun. Yeah. I'm giving them another turn, by the way, essentially. I could have just fought everything, essentially, and then, you know, that would have been fine, but cool. We got there. Game two in the bag. Uh, this is a long one. This is a grindy deck, but hey, we ranked up to platinum. Go us. Let's get one more game in and see how we do. This deck is sweet, guys. Holy crap, is it sweet. It just has backup plan upon backup plan. It's like, yeah, nah, you can't really win. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it, I love it. It uh, the So what is really cool about this is that it devalues a lot of stuff on the opponent's side. So say they counter something. Well, that's fine. It goes to our graveyard. That means we can replay it later. Uh, say they destroy a creature. Cool, no problem. We've we've got ways to bring it back. Say they sweep the board. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Uh, it's it's very very awesome for that. Um, we'll do that and we'll do this. Don't like shocking ourselves against a deck like this, but um, we gain our two life back with this and this guy like. What really sucks is, yeah, they're going to be able to uh, to deal with a lot of our little guys here. Um, but again, it's not the worst thing in the world. I just hope we draw land is really the key. Well, we drew a land. Um, let's get you out there, and let's go ahead and put this guy out. I'm guaranteeing they have a way on... I mean, they've got Skewer the Critics, so they can just kill this straight up, but... Very cool card. I have not been up against this specific card yet. I've been up against decks like this, but um, I'm going to block here. <laughs> We're going to deal the damage. That's fine. They were going to skewer it anyway, so I'd rather just get rid of the creature um, and before they get this down. Wow, double skewer. Fair enough. All right, uh, here I think we actually do kind of have to get black. Um, so let's do that. Let's get Questing Beast out. Now this does represent a bit of a wall for them, so we'll see if uh, this works out or not. They used two of their skewers. Okay, well, it's a good one. Fortunately, no land on our end. Uh, let's just do this. This is going to be a much faster game. Wow, so many Phoenix of Ash. Okay, I assume they just kill Vraska. Sure. Play out the Meyer Triton. Ooh, gain a couple life back. Whew, man. This is an interesting one. Very, very interesting one. Um, yeah. Hmm. Let me make sure I'm reading this. Source of an odd converted mana cost to deal damage to a permanent player. Deals double that damage to that permanent player instead. So... I don't think we can shock ourselves because then we just kind of lose. Um, we can do this though. And just kind of hope they don't have a way to deal with the questing beast. But this is the. Ah! Oh no! Sad day. Well done! Uh, wow! Obosh, very, very good. Uh, well done on the opponent's end. That was a much quicker game. Kind of good because we were kind of running up on time here. But 
hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh we will give this another video because this deck is amazing i absolutely love it hopefully you guys do too i think it's a fun one i really do i think um it's got a lot of legs to do some work in standard uh solely because it devalues everything uh it does not matter if you kill the stuff none of it matters it's just like who cares we we get to eerie ultimatum the key is that you obviously can't run the eerie ultimatum into like a counter spell or something like that we did that against the simic deck which was a little bit difficult but it still has backup plan upon backup plan we still had the pelucranos in the graveyard that was able to come out bait those counters uh or burn through them so to speak and then it just eventually will stick because we will be filling our yard very quickly so i'm happy with this uh very excited to jump into the second video hopefully you guys are too i will see you very soon in the next gameplay video